let's get straight to it then. Yes, here we are, back again. Sorry about last week. <laughs> Things were out of my control. We started off really well, I seem to remember. I was just getting into the just getting into the swing of things when boom, it all disappeared. The power was off and it was gone until about half past two in the morning. Strangest thing. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, so here we are back a week later. And I can't remember much about what we did or how we put this thing together on the breadboard. I was just ready to start uh, with the old soldering. So um, I will I'll do my best. I'll do my best to see if we can put this this module together together that's what we'll do I'll turn on my soldier and iron that would be a good start I'll try not to melt wires cool so if i don't seem very with it today i do apologize ahead of time but we'll, i'm sure we'll get through this it looked like an interesting uh, uh project on the breadboard i enjoyed what it was doing i like the different elements I like the way you would feed things into different things. I think that was that was quite cool. Uh, just having a look at the instructions, for some reason there's a separate page of this, which I was so surprised at that I printed it out, which I've never done before. I'm not sure if it's different from the one that's actually in the manual. I can't see any differences. Will it matter? I'm not sure about that either, but we'll we'll see. We may maybe we'll refer to it as we go. But anyway, you're very, very welcome to join us this evening. The uh, the task is to solder together the Ergosynth's EDU DIY noise sample and hold module. We did last week put it together on the breadboard to see if we could work out what makes it tick or what makes it noise or what makes it sample and hold. And we were successful, I seem to recall, which was great. I really enjoyed the success of it. <laughs> we seem to get somewhere. Uh, now today I'm I'm kind of on holiday, which is why I'm not in my usual uniform. I'm I'm sporting a bit of an Aquaman today, and I've been painting all day, so I'm I'm tired. Everything hurts. I've had my arms in the air all day doing a bit of decorating. <laughs> in between a weekend of camping last weekend and a weekend of camping starting on Friday, so I'm um, a bit of a daze. But hey, this is the only time I could fit it in. I mean, I can't even get the uh, the Molten Monthly fitted in this week. That'll have to be, I'll be doing it on Bank Holiday Monday, I should think. But but we'll see. Anyway, you're very welcome to join us. Uh, my name's Robin, in case I didn't introduce myself, and this is Molten Modular. And in this series of videos, we are tackling the Erica Sense range of educational DIY projects as created by Moritz Klein. Hey! Thanks, Nat. That's very kind. It's always appreciated. So this this is what we have. We have this is part eight, I think. There are nine modules in total, but there are two modules left because one of the parts we did was the case and power supply. Um, so there will be ten. Uh, ten all uh, ten in total. Sorry, I was mildly distracted there by seeing someone in the chat that I wasn't expecting. So that's always nice. So here we are, PCB, front panel. Front panel we're not going to need for a bit. What we will need is this fella here, and we will start populating it with stuff. Now, I've just got to slowly draw my head together into this because I don't really know what I'm doing just at the moment. But let's start with the, um, not that part of the manual, the manual manual. We're going to have to, there's a lot of writing uh, in the assembly appendix for some reason. I might just skip it all, or should we just briefly go through it? That might be good. So, uh, let me sort out what am I doing? <laughs> I'm so with it today. Let's have a look at the manual, shall we? Okie doke, together then. So this is the sample hold noise schematic we're gonna look at on the next page. Um, there's three parts which complement each other. There's a noise generator, then there's a sample and hold unit, and then there's the slew or glide processor, which is something we didn't look at last week. We didn't really have the time. Um, and I guess the, the, the purpose of that particular part of the circuit is to smooth off the edges. So rather than having a stepped sample and hold, you would have a, 
a bendy one, a, a graduated one, a gradiated one, a slewed, slopey one. So that's the idea of that, I believe. There's a whole bit of normal in going on behind, which is going to be interesting. Uh, so that if there is nothing in the input socket, let's have a look at our thing here. I don't actually know what the input is. I assume it's CV in. That seems odd. Well, we'll get to that anyway. We'll test it out later. But anyway, if there's nothing plugged into the input for sampling, it will sample its own internal white noise generator. So I should be looking at this somewhere. Someone thinks should be telling me what this is. Right, I mean, let's have a look at our piece of paper here. It says the signal input is XS1, which is this one here which does actually refer to CV in. Hmm. So that's slightly oddly labelled, I would say, because a CV in te would tend to suggest that you are controlling something with that control voltage as opposed to sampling it, because it could be anything that goes in there. It could be noise, audio, anything. So that's slightly oddly labelled, I would say, Moritz, but never mind. Uh, 4, XS4, yeah, down here is the slew processor input. Yeah, we can see that. Uh, outputs, yeah, got all of those. Yeah, no, I think all of this makes fairly good sense. Yeah, slow fuses. Yeah, blah de blah de blah Let's have a look at the schematic. So... If I rotate this a minute, there we go. Now, is it possible for us to spot anything? I mean, considering I can't remember any of this from last week, the likelihood of being able to spot different bits of the circuit on the actual schematic is pretty slim, I would say. So if anyone can see anything, do point it out. Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. Do, 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 do. Three inputs. So this, these appear to be the noise generators over here, white, blue, and pink. Which was made through breaking something, wasn't it? Breaking the transistor. Oh, right. So you're breaking the transistor to create white noise, and then blue noise and pink noise is created by filtering off a little bit. That's right. Good. Then we have the input going through this JFET. Aha! I'm remembering. Which enables us to do the sampling. They've also taken an output, so you can use that. And over here, we've got a clock input. We didn't look at the clock, particularly last time. And then you've got the SLU circuit here which I'm expecting to be a capacitor, which it is, a bit of a capacitor, dragging things about. Op-amps, yeah. Ken, there's op-amps in abundance, I would say. Op-amps in abundance. JFET was the white noise, was it? Wasn't it this bit here? Isn't it that strange looking, the J113? No, I think... I think the noise was a regular transistor. It was a regular transistor that we broke, as opposed to the JFET was the thing that did the sampling. No, oh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's do some let's do some of that old um, soldering, shall we? Right. Uh, which way up are we? Are we the right way up? Yep, yeah, we are. So we are going to get to here. So we usually start populating PCBs with the lower horizontally placed components like resistors, switch and diodes, things like that. So that's what we're going to do first. So is this going to help me? I don't know that it is. How do I normally do this? Can anyone remember 
how do I normally do this? I kind of feel I do it really efficiently and I, I don't know where I am today. So let me, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick my glasses on because that means I can see things. Oh yeah, everything's labelled. Good, great. So that's going to make things dead simple then. So what we need, what he's done, so let's go to, are we on the overhead? What are we are looking at? You are looking at, okay. So look at our PCB here. Got a whole load of stand-up resistors knocking around over here, capacitors. Some of chips, op amps, of course. That's some other chip, I can't remember. So there's some good old-fashioned uh, resistors happening across here and down here, some diodes. So that's kind of the stuff that we're going to want. So I'm going to want, this is all 100k I think, yeah, probably going to have to test some of these resistors, I imagine, what's this, that's the 1k, so let's have a look. Just adjust a couple of adjustments. There we go. There we are. Da. All right, just get on with it. So we need down here a hundred K, which is these fellas, I'm pretty sure. Hundred K in there. So mine are all higgledy piggledy because I pulled them off the breadboard this time last week. A couple of one Ks. Just slapping them in there. I mean, if you do get a moment to breathe, it's sometimes nice, I find, to stick them in the same orientation of the same type so that they match. You know, you've got a little bit of matching going on. I would say... <laughs> Ian, you always get stuck behind some kind of firewall of, uh, of adverts. Are you like... Uh, you know, not paying for anything. Is that is that the idea? Yeah. Super glue. Anyway, that is a 1K. That's a 1K. What have we got down the bottom here? More 1Ks. So, getting used to all of these fellas. One k Okay. Oh, okay. There we go, another one in there. Well, this is coming together nicely. I think we're nearly done. So I've got a 10. Now then, 10 ohms. That could be that little fella there. What do you think? That looks like my writing and kind of 10 ohmy. Going to go for that. Yeah, I think so. Looks like it's part of the power circuit. Ohm there. Does that mean there's going to be another one? Yep, over by the other diode. Ten ohm. So big fat diodes. These ones are using the power circuit. And with these, you've got a silver line, which matches up with the line on the PCB to tell you which way round it goes. Like that. Like that. 
and the other little diodes which have vanished sadly oh there we go these the uh, 4148s is one there and one up there So with these you've got a black line and that needs to match the line on the PCB. Now these diodes actually have something to do with the circuit. I can't tell you remember what. <laughs> I'm sure you remember though. Good, so that's all the flat stuff, so we can solder that in. And that's a fairly decent start. All the other resistors are stand-up ones, I think. So that should be all the lowest components. So let's have a go at some of that. Right. <coughs> Hi Robin, how you doing? That totally didn't turn on. Oh, that's I've unplugged it. Ah. All right, stand by, stand by. I'll turn that off there. Because after the power cut, of course, when I had the power cut, I was suddenly thinking, oh, I wonder what's going to be left on if it all comes on later. So I made sure I unplugged the soldering iron. That seemed to make good sense and stopped me burning my house down. You know, burning the house down is not something that I, I aim to be doing if I can help it. So once my soldering iron is up to temperature, now apparently I'm told that sponge and water is a waste of time, but you know, people say lots of things, I find. People say all sorts of things. I'm never quite sure who to believe these days, but I keep jabbing it in there. I put my safety specs on, as well as my magnifiers, because what's left of my eyes, I want to keep. Right, good, up to speed, get a bit of solder, hold the end of your soldering iron onto the pad and the leg for a second, push some solder at it, and it should just melt gorgeously like that. Oh god, it's just so lovely. Such a lovely thing. Oops. When it works, I mean, when it's not working, it's slightly different. I've got a little fan on here blowing away the fumes which is a good idea. Nice, flowing really nicely. Just always good. And it's not always the case. Need a little bit more heat on the legs of these diodes. No, I am doing this right. <laughs> <laughs> had a moment of doubt just creep in there when you just go oh my goodness i'm doing it all completely wrong no i'm not no i'm not it's all right it's good it's good it's good is there anything much happening out in synthesizer land so i've been away for a week so i've completely missed everything i don't think there's actually been anything i mean i did because I am at home, I did pop in to do my, my midweek modular article for Gear News. And it was actually hard to find anything to write about. There's not a whole lot going on. I think everyone's just fed up with the heat. Or just wants to get through it, really. With all the expense of doing business at the moment. But that is, of course, why we need cool little kits like this. Gives us the opportunity to do a little bit of modular with a minimum of investment. A bit longer on that leg.
Oh, and by the way, Ken, thanks ever so much for stepping in last week to let people know <laughs> what was going on with the power cut. Because I had this feeling there's a whole bunch of people sitting around on YouTube waiting for the uh, the picture to start up again. A whole bunch of people. I mean, there's you know five of us. Five of us in these sessions. And you were good enough to uh, let people know what had happened. And I was fortunate to be able to get a message to you, to be honest, because we have bugger all mobile phone signal around here. So I had to sit up upstairs in the dark uh, in my bedroom, sort of waiting for a little bit of 4G to waft to waft through Swanton Abbott, where I live, to enable me to send a message. Just crazy. Cool, that looks like it's done. I went in there nice and easy, look at that. Super, where are my clippers? You need a pair of clippers, clip to clip. Take those legs off. So Bob the Builder says he always uses a sponge and water, but with lead-free, lead-free coming. I wonder what that means. <laughs> Temperature needs to be turned up, and I've uh, and I've been and I've been to only use the metal sponge with lead-free. That makes sense. Yeah, true enough, Ian. True enough. Yeah, I, I noticed the Selena. Oh God, this is right in the way. Why is that right in the way? Oh well, never mind. Sorry. Um, yes, I noticed the Selena, the video on the Selena, another thing they can't produce after, funnily enough, kind of told everyone not to say anything about their stuff for the minute. And they released a video on something. I have to say, I mean, I know lots of people get very excited about all sorts of things, but string machines, I, I find, I, I no, I can't find any any interest in those whatsoever. I can't quite work out what it is. Like I say, I, I know people love them for, for various reasons, but I don't know what those reasons are, and I, I can't seem to identify with them in the slightest. The Selena, to me, is like the most boring, <laughs> boring synth you could possibly imagine. It's got like three presets. And a phaser and that's all it does i mean you only use a phaser once and then you never use it again at least that's my experience i don't know i don't know i don't get the string whole string machine thing i mean any synthesizer can do those sorts of sounds and a gazillion other things whereas a string synthesizer just kind of does that it's almost as if 
you're you've got you know you're an organ player you've got an organ and you've got a bit bored of the organ sound you know i know i'll add a string machine perfect great great combination off you go off you go great but i wouldn't really call it a synthesizer not for synthesizing things anyway anyway back to this fella so what we're doing yeah cut off the leads next the dip sockets really dip sockets and capacitors right well we're into this already then that's quite exciting so we've got a couple of those here dip sockets and stuck on my bit of foam and we should have a, a littler one oh yeah over here look now they go where you expect them to and then they want to stick in all the little capacitors all these little fellas here now those are all 104s and they've got one 102 i think yeah so they want all that in is that what you're saying then proceed with the ceramic capacitors they want the, the dip switches in first all right so these fellas here so i don't know why i call them dip switches because that's not what they are dip sockets or ic holders so you see the notch on the board see the notch that corresponds to the notch there so that goes in the right way around not that this has any kind of orientation it doesn't matter but it's just bringing that notch up onto here so that when you put the chip in it's the right way around put the chip in the right way around that's all that's doing now of course when you turn this over to solder it it probably falls out so you can either take that up blue tack it up or i i just kind of bend bend a leg in a couple of places and then that's that's kind of magic it doesn't fall out and when it's pushed down it will then flatten itself out stick another one in over here same idea same orientation and just do it a, a little push and then this little one in the middle that way around see there's the, the little nick it goes in the same Give that a pull and I will just do those so I'll turn it upside down now it's going to tilt a little bit so it might end up with them a little bit wonky so you either put something under there to keep it up a little bit which I might do but also as you're soldering you push down on it in order to make it a bit flatter so where are we let's go with this one here I'm just going to hold everything down Push it against the pad and the little leg and it should go on pretty nicely remove take off the soldering iron keep your finger pressure down so that you hold it down i'm going to do another corner take the iron off leave the pressure on and if you have a look at it it should be lovely and straight the other one's falling out let's do the other one Good. And I'll do a leg of this one here as well. Good. Just check that they're not terribly wonky. Won't matter if they are really. But it's nice to get them straight if you can. And when they're all good, do the rest. It's always good to check. Because if you do mess it up for one reason or another, it's, it's easy to desolder one leg and pull the thing out. It's terribly difficult to desolder 14 legs. So always check it. Do one leg, maybe two legs, opposite corners, and then check it. fan is not particularly on point today I'm just going to turn that a little bit so i'm getting a lot of a lot of fumes straight up my nose which is kind of nice in many ways but ultimately 
not very pleasant for me. For my well-being. That's better. Sounds like a whole load of dogs doing something outside. I find doing IC holders intensely satisfying. Lovely. All look good. Put them on the right way around. Super. Uh, Cool. Well, I'm glad I'm not alone. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Right, so uh, these ones then. These must be the simpler labelled ones. Yeah, yeah, C13, 14. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. I think that's 0 0.1. So where's the different one? 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Not sure at the moment. So we'll leave the 102 out of the way. And we'll see where we can populate the, the 104s, which are the 0 0.1. Uh, microfarad could be nanofarad. Oh, who knows? <laughs> the 0.1 u farad. There we go, microfarad probably. But that's an n one there. Oh, hang on, hang on. See, that's not in yet. That might be it. That's a 104. I'm just going to spin back to the. Uh, Bit of materials, but my own sixty-three. So the nanofarad is the one hundred two, whereas the um, the a hundred nanofarad. Oh, I guess how it's so annoying, isn't it? Why can't they just have a convention for heaven's sake? So 100 nanofarads, which presumably is 0 0.1 microfarads, are the 104s. So the 1 nanofarad is the, 100, is the 102. So let's go back up to here. So you should have, you have to look at it quite closely. As it talks about it. No, it then goes horizontal. Oh, I know, crazy, crazy, crazy. Because he hasn't actually installed it there. So... Uh, that's okay. You get 104s and you get 102s. See, 104s are 0.1 microfarad. 102 is 1 nanofarad. And the 1 nanofarad seems to be the C12 over here in this top left corner. But um, on the diagram there, he hasn't put that one in yet. So let's not put that one in yet. 
let's put all the other ones in. So I've got C5 over here, that's a 0 0.1. That one there. C6 in there. C11. Thirteen, C three, C four, and we've got one left, C fourteen. That look like the lot on the manual. Yeah, it does. Let's stick those in. I don't think that's in. I don't think that's in at all. Sometimes it just goes straight up the iron, <laughs> and you got no hope. Come on, come on, come on, I got my angle wrong or something, it's not quite working. It's interesting how the fan does have an effect, you know, and now that the fan is, is now blowing better, I'm not quite getting the heat I was getting before, which might suggest I should turn my iron up. It is working, it's just a matter of getting it just where it needs to be. Snip those legs off. Watch out for accidental bridges like that one, where things just get too close to each other. Sometimes they end up touching via the solder.
see that. The convention is two numbers followed by the number of zeros. So 104 is... That's not... 104 is 10, oh, what then? Four zeros. Oh, okay. No, I mean, I meant, I didn't mean that there's no convention, as in, I know that there's a reason why they are what they are. I just, it's the convention of having it as 100 nanofarads rather than 0.1 microfarad. Why don't you just stick to microfarads or stick to, you know, stick to one? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh, oh, I missed one. Okay. What happened there? That's odd. Okay. So I got all of those in. Looking lovely. Except for the one oh except for the one oh two, which we haven't looked at yet. Let's see if that turns up at a later date. So now we're going to do the vertically placed resistors, which is that's so exciting. Then it should look like that. So all over this top bit here, they've got all of these vertical resistors. So what happens with that? Well let's find one, shall we? I've got 100k over here, which is the, these bunch of jokers here. So rather than having them like this, which is lovely, in order to save space, we have it. Uh, we have them in like this, like this. You ready? Like that. It's exciting, isn't it? And then on the PCB, where the body goes, is represented by the circle. And it really doesn't matter. It's not important, but in layout terms, that's what they're going for, so that you can see that it looks the same as it is on the picture. That's what you want. So that's 100k in there. Uh, my 100k's look different to the ones that are in the in the manual. They can vary in uh, background color resistors. It doesn't really matter. It's the banding that's important, or even more important, it's what you measure on your uh, voltmeter thing resistance meter <laughs> resistance is metered what have I got over here so next to this yeah, I've got a 22k now with a bit of luck it might might still be labeled depends on whether we used it in the build or not in the breadboard build 47 I can't even see 2k so I might have to don't know what that is. 20k. 10k. 22k. There it goes. There he is. Cool. It definitely says 22k on that. I'm just going to absolutely believe it. Because I measured these a week ago. So, like so. 22k is there. The other way around. 22k. Uh, see, this is why we do the breadboarding thing, because ultimately populating a PCB and soldering it is just kind of a, a mild puzzle in trying to find things and place them, and then the joy of soldering, which is a, a joy in of itself, you know, that needs no justification, really. But in doing this, in placing these components, I, I learn absolutely nothing. And that's the whole reason why these <coughs> this series of modules exists. To encourage you onto the breadboard in the first instance, so you can see and understand why uh, why it is that op amps actually rule the world and how everything is made from them. I hope that's right. So, what's that one there then? That's that one, that's that one, that's this one. That could be our... Hmm. Difficult to see at the moment. I definitely have an 100k there. And... Okay, so that's... So what this is saying, let me get a pointy stick. <laughs> is that... Get it in camera. And I think that this here is a hundred. R twenty four there is a hundred. 
and that's R20 with 680. What I could do is I could look at my, I could look at my piece of paper, all right? And that will tell me, won't it? Yeah, R100, R100. Yeah, 100K, 100K, 680. Okay, cool. Look at that. So it did come in useful. So this is a, what is this? Is that 100? Yeah. So 100 in that bottom one. Another hundred in that middle one. No, I'm doing that wrong. Oh, it doesn't go that way. Oh, see, that's interesting. It goes the other way. So that one there, that's not a middle one. We've got one going that way, and then these two go actually the other way. So R100 is, goes from top to bottom. That's a little bit tricksy, that is. And then the 680. 680, is that the old dodgy looking one? I reckon it's that one. I'm going to have to test it. Because I cannot remember. If anybody wants to get quick on the uh, uh, googling the colour bands, they're very welcome. And then let me know three minutes later in the chat. Six six five. Six six five K. Not point six six five K. Even it's just six six five. So six six five, is that close enough to six eighty to make no difference? What do we think? Do you want another six eighty? Alright, let's just wind straight back to the bit of materials. There's a 680. Nothing else like it. So it must be this one. Go into that space there. Good. So along this top here, I've got a 470, a 4.7, a 47, and a 470. Fascinating. So that's a 4K7. That's a 470. One meg. Ten K. 33, 2K, 1K, so I'm going to have to find that then. Anyway, there's a 470, 470K. Which is that end one. 4K7, which is the funny way of saying 4.7. And 47K. Seven K. There it is. There it bloody is. Look, sitting right there, staring at me. Excellent. Excellent. Forty-seven K. 
We're getting a bit busy down here. So then we've got off another 4.7 over here. Now there's nothing wrong with soldering some of them in and then soldering some others. Just got to be, be careful of those lines. Do you see those lines? That's the way, see that little line there? That is the way that you know which way round your resistor is going. So it's not like that. It's from there to there. Got to be very careful about that. I've got 100k in there, and from there to there. So I think we should do this lot before it gets a little bit out of control. I can't see myself. <laughs> Blue, grey, yellow. Is that what that was in the end? I've got sort of blue. Could be grey. And kind of a brown. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. I'm not going to worry about it. So it's the only one of that sort of type of resistor, so it's bound to be more or less right. Take your time. Relax the shoulders. I saw that Simon the Magpie released another synth, a little pocket synth, pocket drone, sort of a companion or a smaller version of his beehive, which is rather cool. It's just a mass of incongruous oscillators waiting to be pulled together into some kind of sound. It's nice. Doing a lot more hardware these days. It's also interesting, he did a podcast recently with Moritz, the guy who designed all of these modules. I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, but it looks, I imagine that would be quite cool. Find out what he's on about. What his mission is. And that's not that, just in a minute. Come on, it's not working. That's better.
like I say, if you put too many resistors in at once, the legs just become a pain in the ass. <laughs> too many of them in too many places. Comes unwieldy. Okay, looking good, snip those off. Looking good, so let's find some more. 51k. Not going to find that right now. 2k. I had those over here, didn't I? So 20k. Isn't it two together? 2k? Here we go. 2k. Sixteen goes to there. There's the other two K. Put that there in. This goes from there to there. I'm pretty sure. Hundred Ks. Down here. R twelve. Seven just get 
to do a little bit of double checking again. So 100k and 100k there and a 33k in between. So I'm trying to work out. That's 100k. When in doubt, consult the sheet. But you're not going to want to get it wrong. 100k is down from there to there. I want to find my 33k, which is that one. in between the two good good so what have I got left I've got one four seventy Okay, so I've got 470. I've got. I don't know what that one is. I've got a 51k. That's good. Let's go for that one at the top. Three, one, two, three, there, there, did the two in the middle, did those at the top, so that one, some down there, like a hundred. So does that one. Black, black, orange, browns. Yeah, so those two are. I've got something completely wrong. Those are a hundreds. We go down here, there's a hundred there. There's 100. Now, if I remember rightly, there was something wrong last time. We had two of something and not one of something else. And I can't remember what that is or what that was from last week. But I know I can put 100k in there. And that's fine. Now, I've got a 1 meg. Problem is, I've got a 1 meg here and a 1 meg there. That makes me sad got a 10k so 10k here so that one can go in
470. Funny having now printed this out, I'm using it all the time. It's 470 is on this side above the 10k. So one meg. Come back to that. That's a hundred K. That is that could be a thirty-three. I think that's a thirty-three. Oh, couple of spares, couple of spares I didn't spot. What have I got? Twenty K. Come on, sort yourself out. That looks like another one meg. Ah, I might have saved the day. So this is a 20k. Which is here. These two are one megs, which is great. I thought I only had the one. So we are sorted. One meg here. It would normally never take this long to put the resistors in. For these horizontal ones, it's difficult to see. It's difficult to identify sometimes just all takes more time but it does save space so this oh I've got yeah that's a that's a hundred so this last one I've got must be the 33k and it looks very much like that one there which was 33 so I'm going to go with it which fits into this bit over here And I seem to have a hundred K left over. Which might well turn up at some point. But it might just be an extra. So, in the hope that we've put the right things in the right places, let's solder all this together. <coughs> oh. oh, everything aches today. Flip. Still so warm. See what I'm doing. Can't 
can't get any solder in. What is it with solder? It just bends in alarmingly strange ways sometimes. Always away from what you're trying to achieve. Well, I guess it's the drama in this high quality television you're watching. Oh, just bite me. <laughs> Come on. <sighs> We're still on resistors, for heaven's sake. So, right, bunch over here. trying to get my attention.
all about the slow. Oh, groan. I think that's them. Mostly, not the most impressive volcanoes and all of these, but never mind. Let's pair them back. That hit me on the chin. Oh look, there's one sticking there all by itself. I completely failed. Solder, I've lost it now. Where was that then? Oh no, maybe it was just a loose uh, leg. Yeah. It seems to be a little bit frozen. That's really annoying. Very annoying. Just check in. All right, everybody. Just check in. See what things are doing. Error, not receiving enough to maintain smooth streaming. Now it's excellent again. No, I didn't teleport. Okay, it's now buffering intermittently. <laughs> All right, well, I'm just going to have to carry on. I'm afraid. Sorry about that. I can't. I can't solve it. I've asked some people to come off, and uh, we'll see where we go. And I'll be back to these transistors. Hopefully, on the re-through, on the rerun, it will <clears throat> look a bit better. Uh, if you're watching this after the event otherwise i'm sorry i'm just going to have to keep on going and assume it's all just going to work beautifully so over here <clears throat> i've got the 54 so that's the jfet where does the jfet go down here so it's going to stick the middle leg out a bit forward You've got to remember to get the orientation right. So on the screen print, 
you've got the flat bit and you've got the flat bit of the what's it so this is the jfet one the j133 no 113 which is here that one squeeze that in i've just thought of another way around this Oh, just got attacked by a moth. Now what have we got? This one is the 548C. 548B. Oh. <laughs> this is a 548C. What's this one? This is a 3904, which goes over here. 3904. 3904 over there, flat bit, flat bit, little mid middle leg pointing out. So this last one must be here, which although it says BC 54B, no, that's not, that's right. So this is 54BC. So yeah, that's absolutely right. Look again for the screen print, middle leg pointing out, seems to be. Plug it in there. It's all over. What's all over? This build is cursed. Oh, I've got errors again. I'm still here, I'm going to say. I'm here even. Audio is good. Oh, well, that's nice. I can still talk then. Okay, so I got me three, got me three transistors. I'm all awash now because now I know it's not really working properly. It starts to like, I don't know, go into your head. Anyway, got to get on because it's nine o'clock and I'd really like to get this done. So I'm going to solder away in the hope that it all just gets better at some point and I'll keep on talking it's all because I went quiet that was the problem now I have heard that magical county broadband is going to be installing in Swanton Abbott over the next sort of six months or so which means we'll get like untold bandwidth crazy stuff like what you lot get in them towns and cities so that would be awesome because it would finally sort of sort this sort of problem out I mean, but normally speaking live streams don't do too bad from here but recently i have to say it hasn't worked as well i had a bit of a problem with the uh, sonic state talk the other week that i was on where you know I was just getting low bandwidth it was still working I just wasn't going across at the level of resolution that I like to but you know everybody is online everybody's doing everything 
that's the problem looking good now see look because that my oldest has been uh, ranking up in uh, Valorant is his current uh, thing he likes to play which is very exciting it's all Quake Arena really at the end of the day but in different forms right that's all three of those transistors in if you've just come back to where we were we're just putting the transistors very slowly and I've been farting around trying to work out why my bandwidth is so low just at the minute sounds like we've got it back which is great I'd hate to be sitting here just doing this for my own benefit lovely though that is so good running again Working good now, Ken. Good. Thanks for sticking with me. Thank you. Much appreciated. Right. Pay close attention. From another dimension. Next. Film capacitors. Okay. Remain in ceramic and solder them. Also the electrolytics. <sighs> with those dodgy legs. Long leg positive. We should end up with that one. Oh, okay. So that's why he didn't solder it in. It's because he's got one of the these flatty ones rather than the 102, I think. I think that's what's going on. Let's see if we can work this out. So we're going to put in these little fellas and then the electrolytics. So I've got two here, which are two N2s, J100s. How does he label these on here? Just by the numbers. That's a shame. <laughs> so I'm going to have to work out what these all are. Okay. Is this going to help me do that? I don't think it is. No, just numbers and values. Right, so I'm going to have to go back and work this out from the uh, build guide, from the bill of materials. Whack back up to the top again. Let's have a look. So. So. Uh, let's do the electrolytics last. Oh, that's the third one of those. So J sixty three should be two of J sixty three is a one microfarad. There. I'm assuming there C9 C7 microfarad microfarad okay those big fat chunky ones go at the top there good then there's one K4K763, 4K763, 4K one of those, that's a 470 nano. Four seventy. Four seventy nano down here. These foil ones don't require any particular orientation. There's eight 104s, we've put that in. One J100. J100, which is this, which is 100 nanofarad, which is also 0.1, I suppose. Looks like it's this one over here. The 
those two 5.6s, which are called 5N something or other. 2N2 J100s. They're the 2.2s. Oh, we've got another one here. So I've got two of these. 5N6J. 5N6J. They're 5.6. I've got one there. I've got another one over here, 5.6. Ow, ow. I've got stubby little tough legs. And these are 2.2 .2 nanofarads. Point two is one there, C nineteen. Down there, C sixteen. I've got those two big red ones, which are the six six eighties. Colourful bunch of um, capacitors on this build. 680 over here. All right, I'm going to do that lot. Oh, the other thing is my 102 here. Now you may have a foil one of these rather than a ceramic, but this appears to be over in this top left corner, as we, as I said earlier, C12. Um, on the picture in the manual, it's a foil one, so it's one of those blocky square ones. Whereas what I had in my bag was that fella, so I'm going to stick that in there. Yeah? Do those electrolytics in a minute, let's get all this stuff in. Yeah, the single board design is nice that it's all on one board. It's not quite so nice. With those horizontal, not horizontal, vertical resistors can be a bit of a pain, I'm finding. Come on. Completely failed. Oh yeah, keep talking, keep talking. In case you think I've frozen up again. Uh. <laughs> I don't know.
says Down the lot. Yeah, I think so. Right, moving on. Should be just about up to the hardware now. Uh, apparently, lovely child was downloading a game. <laughs> That'll do it, I reckon. That'll do it. Right. Uh, where was I? Oh, I put a load of stuff in. Right, they need to find out where these other ones go. 65. Yeah, that's about right. So with the big ones, these ones, these fella here, long leg, positive. Short leg, negative. Stripe on the uh, barrel of the body and these are going to go on sort of round circle ones like this one up here now for this the square so the square pad is usually positive that's not always the case it's not always the case but apparently it is in this case and that line on the pcb goes with the negative the short side so that one goes in like that another one so oh, there's a couple down here they're all the same actual capacitor so long leg in the square hole so the line goes with the negative one more long leg positive into the square hole like that now always check because square holes are not always the same on everything did that actually get soldered in yeah i think it did <laughs> well they're all a bit wonky not to worry not to worry Okay, so let's get these capacitors in and then we can do the physical sockets and bits and pieces. Sometimes it's just really poor. Other times it goes on completely fine. Who knows the mysteriousness of soldering iron placement. 
and how well they conduct heat. Probably need to get some sandpaper to be tip or something. I don't know. That did not go on at all. <laughs> Dear idea, this is terrible. Whereas on that side, completely fine. I don't quite get it sometimes. Okay, that one's gone. That's good. This one. <laughs> okay, so now we're talking about these sorts of bits and pieces. And the power thing. Where's the power thing? Jack sockets. Oh, hang on. There we go. Got a bag I neglected. Extra bits and pieces, bit of a knob. <laughs> See, that's still funny after all these years. That's, cause there's some, there's some comfort in that, I think. Right. So this is the power socket, which goes in here somewhere. There's a little nick on here, which doesn't really relate to anything. I mean, it says it relates to the minus twelve, but which way round is is this then for minus twelve? Who who knows? There's no indication on this of that at all other than the socket bit in the side. So what you have to do is look at the picture and work out which way around that is. So in the manual, it looks like the gap here is on the outside. So I'll get this the right way up. Like, like that. Now this annoyingly is, is too small and when I turn this over to solder it, it's gonna fall straight out. Because for some reason, the manual told us to do these large capacitors first, which is silly. But never mind, this is where we are. So when I turn this upside down, it's just going to drop out. They're a bit too thick to bend with my nail. God darn it, so I'll have to resort to a piece of foam. Piece of foam upside down press down to try to get a single one soldered in. So let's press down on this nice square one in the hope that that will just work beautifully. It has, take the solder off, hold it, make sure it's going to be as straight as possible, let it cool, turn it over, ah oh, it's a good one. Yeah, no, it's a good one. Good, good. Let's do the rest. Oh, 
No, that one doesn't want to do it. Oh, let's just ignore that one then. seem to get myself at the right magnification. See all my eyes are giving out. That's always a good sign. That's all right. Okay, that's in. Looking good. Looking good. Now turn it over. Inspect the joints. Oh yeah, fantastic. Put the jack sockets in and solder them. Good. So we turn it over. Jack sockets. Thank you, Moth. So these, you've got the extra leg sticking out, which refers to your twangy leg here. Put that in there. And they sort of grip just about enough. Is that the lot? Yeah, I've got extras because because <laughs> uh, I've been using two kits for various reasons and I borrowed some from somewhere else. Anyway, so that's uh, that array in. Now it suggests that you just sort of turn it over and solder them. But what I like to do is I like to put the front panel on at this point because it enables me just to keep it a little bit together because I tend to solder these things in wonky if I'm not careful so if I just loosely do like like that and then turn it over first of all it's going to keep it together more or less and it will ensure that they are all um, able to be inserted through the front panel after being soldered and not just wonky all over the shop which is always very likely I'm going to turn my, uh, if I can remember. No, I don't remember how to turn this up. A little bit more, just in case that's the problem I'm having at the moment. Maybe my tip has got inefficient for various reasons. Probably layers of scum or something. I can see if turning it up a little bit is going to help. OK. 
Oh, I just think it's a little boring. a little bit. So when soldering on the opposite side, I'm going to try to avoid melting other components with the side of the soldering iron, if at all possible. going better now. Oops. <laughs> See, look, I've just melted the side off that flipping resistor. I always do something. Okay, I think that's good. Lovely, next. Insert the pots, don't solder them yet. All right, so same sort of thing. Put the panel on first. Which pots are which? We've got two blues and a green. At the top here we've got the B250K, B250K. Should go in quite nicely, although if you've had them in the breadboard like me, they might be a little bit misaligned. So those, burn, those two are both the same. So don't solder them. Put this on for the exact same reasons as I did for the other one. Now these are a little low, but they're not being screwed on, so that doesn't matter. 
Put the big nut on here. And then put one, if not two, nuts on the bottom just to hold it there while you solder it in. You can find the holes. Now the top one is stuck in here somewhere so you've got to be really careful about melting anything. Okay, these three pins aren't too bad. Oops, see that I've melted the corner off that capacitor. Awesome. Your soldering iron high. But the side standoffs could be a bit tricky. Or not. Well, I think they've worked. I think that's okay. <laughs> they don't grip on a breadboard. No, they don't. They give the illusion that they do sometimes. You think, oh yeah, that's nice. And then pop, no, they're out all the time. See, there's me trying to look with my glasses on that I've just literally taken off. <sighs> just so losing it. Right, okay, so. Now go ahead and solder. Right, okay, now remove the front panel again. There's always an LED, isn't there? So, get that off there. That off there. Don't solder it yet. So, LED. Um, so, what? VD1, do we reckon? Long leg positive. Difficult to read this one. Doesn't really, it's not conclusive. I mean, again, square pad often indicates positive. And there's a slight, very slight, if you can see that, squashing on this side, which would put that on the flat side of the LED 
which is normally negative, which I oh know it is always negative. So in that case, this side is slightly flat. So the square hole is indeed positive on this occasion. So the long lead goes in the square hole. Do not solder it. Oh, now put this back on. Sorry, getting tired now. And we should be there. Am I going to have to take this off again? No, okay, so this is the last time we're going on, so I can put all the screws on. of patience. All on, knob. Oh, let's do this LED thing first. So the LED um, just drops in. Make sure it fits into the hole. See that it goes into the hole. So you've got to push it forward. Goes into the hole, and then hopefully it will just sit there, and you can solder it without it falling out. And it's done. Uh, I can't actually see. Is it, it was a good, good suggestion, Ken. That usually you've got a resistor connected to the positive side of a diode. I think that's what you're talking about. I can't actually see through the through the PCB to know whether that's the case. Oh, that was cool. screw thread in so I'm going to need a little screwdriver mm. that'll do in order to release that give us the room put it over the knob <laughs> come on so I'm going to turn it all the way to the left put this over here so it's pointing at the left hold it and screw it up so it's a high precision instrument this obviously there you go it goes down to almost one and all the way around to a hundred is that good enough for me that's good enough for me I'll put that there. of course it's good enough right looking good looking like a flipping completed module Woo. except the chips right gotta put the chips in Mind the orientation, and then it's done. Connect it. There's no smoke. Then it should uh, it should all just like kind of work. So 
get these fellas make sure that the that bit on them that's <laughs> that hole nicked bit the indentation follows the indentation on the IC holder which is following the indentation on the uh, PCB silk screen and then oh no oh I wanged it off <laughs> Oh no, I haven't done that in eight. I can't remember the last time I did that. Look at that. Look at that. Look. He's, oh, one of those legs didn't make it in. Let's see, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> oh, it's all over the place. Right, we're heading for some serious problems now, I think, because I'm running out of steam. So that goes. And get that to go in there this time that's better looking good got it the right way around good another one in this side checking that's more or less fitting in yeah push it in good both the same way around then this last little squidgy one magic tool just to give it a squeeze to flatten those legs a little bit and for this one you go on the dot I mean I've always been slightly quizzical about this because these ones here also have a dot but apparently no that's not the front end this is the front end whereas on these littler ones the dot is the front end but hey what can you do it's, it's electronics they just make stuff up as, as they go Push that in, great stuff. See what I should do is uh, is do a quick um, like insta and that. Why have I got biscuits going on? Who knows? Don't worry about the biscuits. So we are. So let's go for those of us about to sample and hold. Is it witty, witty? Jam that up on there. Oh, Arthur Jolly, what have you got going on now? Good, lovely. So, uh, so that should be it. So what we need is a power cable. <laughs> Not sure my surgery really, really matches up, mate. But it's nice of you to say. <laughs> no, wrong way around. Do you have problems with polarity in actual surgery? So red line is always negative 12. That's what we've got here. It can only go one way around anyway because of this thing here. But just checking that that's right. So there we go. There's our module with our power supply. So at this point, ladies and gentlemen, we'll have to plug it in. Right, let's get rid of those and those. Oh, wow. Um, let me... Let me... Uh, they will just hang on there. <laughs> uh, here's the... Here's the modular so far. Up. Right. So this, I imagine, you can't really see this. Let me see if I can pull this back. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Woohoo! Something like that. I don't know that would stay. Let's just pretend that it will. So, good, good. This is going to go here, I reckon. But let's put it in the right way up and plug it into power. There is not a single slot there, is there? All right, what am I going to do? Oh, oh. 
No, I mean, honestly, what am I going to do? Does anything go any more that far? That way, so I have to come back this way. Yeah. Oh, and these are also terribly, terribly hard to unscrew. I kind of decided to put in normal screws now because this has been so difficult, but I don't have any. So I don't quite know how to resolve that situation just at the minute. Because these nerdies are obviously too big, and I keep going with it every time squishing these nerdies in in the hope that they're just going to go through the holes but they're just not right work. just not right anyway let's see if we can find a power source there's one so let's plug this in see where does it go this way around Well, all I've got is a nerdy, so I'll have to go with it. Well, that went in beautifully. That ain't going in. Shuffle, shuffle. This needs a little bit over here. There we go, there we go. We're in, we're in. Okay, nobody panic. That's got it completely rounded. What's the next one in the series? Well, it's either the wave folder or the mixer and headphone output. I, I, my money's on the wave folder. They don't tell me which order it comes in. But it would make sense to do the mixer headphone thing last, I think. Well, at least to me, it makes some kind of sense. Some kind of sense. So I imagine we're doing wave folder next, which is nice. And that'll fit in this gap here, I'm, I'm assuming. Okay, if I could stick one more in, that would make this a little bit more secure. Right, so let's turn it on, see if we get anything go boom. No, look, we get a flashing light. Good Lord, he gets away with it again. Who would have believed it? Turn this up, does it go faster? It goes faster. Oh, yes. Right, so what we want is we want a sequence going into my VCO to make things more interesting. Clock in, clock out, reset, get out. CV out, get out into an envelope, this out going into my watch in my flip, and then out of that going into me this mixer, and then I need, oh crikey, I need an output, right, okay, hang on, stand by. Output there. But this is a is this a mixer for audio? Does it matter? Because I've got no the out doesn't want to be going through. It needs to be going through. No, this is a filter. What am I doing? Uh yeah, if this goes out of there into there. I'm gonna take just take the out of the VCA for every sake. Let's 
Stop making things more complicated than they need to be. Out of the envelope. Is it there? <laughs> right, sorry, just hang on while I turn some things on.
Well, I got something wrong. Um, totally possible. What that would be, it's really hard to say. Is it a bit of noise in between the voltage levels on the scope? Could be. Let's take it back to its basics. Like on the breadboard, screw you! <laughs> no need to filter I mean I've got to have some way of knowing what it's doing yeah there has to be something that tells me oh it's doing this I've got to be able to experience a, a sample and hold output you know and I did that on the breadboard by connecting it to a filter or something similar So this is going to knock around sort of by itself. <laughs> well, let's just take the filter out of the equation for the moment. Put this in here. La! Brilliant, okay. So let's take the output of the sample and hold. I say I understand how to use this. I don't really know what I'm talking about. Plug this in here. Right, let's... Um, Let's do something with this. Oh, it seems to be getting worse. Okay. That's not really what I'm expecting to see. This is the sound of the hold output. So, I mean, I would expect to see, wouldn't we, a flat voltage? Which is what we're getting the other side of that noise. Yeah, I was doing that, Steve. I was doing that. <laughs> I plugged it into the VCO. It sounded like sample and hold, yeah? I plugged it into the filter. It sounded like sample and hold, but with something in the front. And what we're seeing on the scope here, because I think this is the sample and held level, what we're getting is either bleed from um, the noise or something. Because I reckon this here is on the front of the signal. That's what I think at this point. Do you see that? Do you see what I'm saying?
See, those are the those are the sample and hole things. We've just got this squidge of noise on the front. There we go. Starting to see it more now. Get this burst of noise on the front of each sample and hold thing. So does that mean that some kind of filter is not working? What do we think? <laughs> Honestly, Steve, it's, it's a very basic setup. <laughs> So that's very interesting, don't you think? So when I slew it, if I swap this for the slew input, so I add a little bit of slew, it takes that front edge off. Do you see? How interesting. So I guess I have to take this out of here for a second. Now it may simply be that I've got a short. But any other suggestions, gratefully received. We just have a check through the back. Oh, well of course, it's not the soldering I'm looking at because of the front panel. Just going to see if there's if I've got anything else. What else could be shorting? Put those in the right way around. Looking at my leg sticking out. I do have a hundred K resistor that isn't in. Put that way around. And look, look, there's a spare there's a spare hole there. R twenty three, what's R twenty three? R23 is 100. All right. That's probably it then. I mean, I, I'll put my money on that. Right. So, okay. That's that's a that's a thing we can fix. So, I I thought I might just have an extra resistor. Which was a terrible assumption of me. So, uh, take these, all these buggers off. Do I have a key for this? Didn't the Moog What's It come with that? Yeah, look, look. Yes, the Mavis came with this thing, yeah. Which is only partially useful. I don't think it's very useful. <laughs> it's easier to do it with your fingers. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, front panel off. Where did that go? Because that's going to land straight in my power supply and blow the 
everything up. Is it not magnetic? Oh, damn you. <laughs> okay. Uh, tweezers. Okay, done. Right. So, my missing resistor. me that something more interesting doesn't function. Right, let's try that. See, that looks better. That looks better. Still a little bit of something at the front, but not where nowhere near as bad. So yeah, I think that was the problem. Look at that, that's a bit more like it. Yeah, cool. Let's see what that sounds like. What do people think? Gonna be good? Put the thing back on. Well, I couldn't find where it went. You know, it's not uncommon to find yourself with a, uh, a resistor over, particularly when it was the 
the most common resistor in your build and also I had the added complication if I was mixing a couple of kits together because I had to steal some components and I couldn't find where it went, couldn't find the missing hole, couldn't find it and then there she was Have some Keith Emerson. What? I'm sorry, I don't, I don't get the reference. Is he a big proponent of sampling and holding? Oh, it's twenty past ten. Come on! Let's just get this done. Don't leave that in there. Flipping Nora. Right. <laughs> Have that in there.
Yes, it is. <laughs> so there you go. So a minor problem there of, of me not actually installing all of the components. Uh, I left one out for, for shits and giggles, I suppose. But we found a hole and we put it in and that seemed to sort it out. So, so yes. So that was that. That's the sample and hold noise module uh, as part of this wonderfully growing little modular system. We're nearly there. So wave folder, go in here, output module, going over there. And then, and there it is. We would have got there. So next month then, I think the wave folder, and we would have been at this for almost a year. <laughs> yeah, quite a commitment, I think. But uh, it's quite a groovy little system. And I, I now know more about op amps than I'd, I'd ever I'd ever care to want to ever know ever. So thanks for sticking with me. That's been great. I'm glad it was a success in the end. Uh, just goes to show that you can always trip yourself up for and convince yourself of things without really knowing what you're talking about, which is great. But I'm a big fan of uh, sample and hold. I love a little bit of that on the filter, which is exactly what we've got. So that's perfect. As far as I can see, I think that'll do us. So good. It's half past ten. Whew, three hours for that one. Uh, Soldier took a little bit longer than normal for some reason. Don't know what that is. Always, things are always changing. Things are always different. Uh, you just keep at it. <laughs> That's all I can say. Bill, yeah, I think it's a great way to learn. It, it is. The, although, I mean, I think if you're, if you're taking this on yourself, you'll spend a lot more time on each individual unit, I should think. And you'll probably be doing them closer together. So you won't have such yawning gaps between each one. And you'll spend time reading the manual and consuming all of that information that it's given you and, and working it out. Um, my approach is very much, is very haphazard, is very on the go, <laughs> giving it a go without pre-reading, without um, spending enough time by any stretch really learning that what the stuff is about. But there's lots and lots of learning to be had in this, particularly on the breadboarding side, which is great. And, you know, I'm doing this just to try to show a basic level of how that comes together, uh, because you should spend more time on it than I than I really give it. I sort of rush through a little bit because, you know, see, I'm doing it on on video and I don't want it to go on for six hours. That would be silly. So I hope I give some kind of it. Um, some kind of example of, of how to tackle it more than anything else but I think this is a fantastic opportunity to learn uh, to learn about circuits to learn how these work and um, as I say a couple more to go and then and then it is complete <laughs> you could find that resistor on the schematic and work out why it did that no I don't think so do you <laughs> I mean uh, where is it well, it's near the op amps, so it's something to do with that out on that leg. But yeah, I mean, that would be entirely possible to do that, yes. But I don't have the time for that right now. But uh, but there we go. Thanks very much. So thanks for watching. Coming up, what's next? Well, there'll be a multi monthly after the bank holiday weekend because I don't have time this week to do it. So I'll get stuck into that. Tuesday next week so you should have it possibly by end of the month if not very very early September so that's the next thing coming up so I will see you for that and then probably the following Sunday we will have uh, you know a, a, a regular get together and chat live stream 
where I've got lots of, I've got lots of stuff that's that's been building up over the summer that I haven't had time to tackle. So maybe in that live stream we'll just get out everything that I have and plug it in and see what we can make of it. Maybe that would be a plan. Um, quite possibly. Anyway, that'll do us now. I think I need to go and have a beer and sit down. <laughs> Somewhere more comfortable. In the meantime, go and make some tunes. Oh, darn it. See, I, I almost thought I might know which one it, which button to press. Almost. I don't even know. Look, let me try a few. What? How does this one, does this one do anything? No, no, that's the first one. That one. There we go. There we go. See you later. Thanks for coming. Thanks. You're, you're a, a diamond, you are, Ken. I always, uh, I always feel better. Anyway, you're welcome, Bill. All the best with your builds, mate. All the best. You can't. <laughs> All right, hang on a tick. Hang on, everyone's having a uh, is uh, contributing, which is great. We love a bit of that. Um, yeah, the, see, the thing with the, the ticking the components off is that uh, I don't have a printed manual. You don't have a bill of material. You sort of have a bill of materials now because um, I kind of persuaded Moritz it'd be a good idea because I moaned about it so much on the first build but it, I don't have a way of ticking it off it just doesn't seem to work like that because the the sort of the bill of materials is at the front and the the build instructions are in the back um, so <laughs> it just doesn't seem to have worked out like that that sounds like it should be easy but it's not, and that's what normally what I do on on builds. That's very much what I do, but it just doesn't seem to work in this in this situation. Maybe I just need to try harder. But hey, I mean, normally speaking, all the components go in. You know, the fact that I had one spare, um, put this little light in my head saying I need to find out where that should go if it should go anywhere. But I did have a look, didn't find anywhere. But we found something that was wrong, which enabled us to look deeper. Because you don't always see things on the first go, you know. There's no magic solution. Whatever it is you do, there's always a possibility of screwing it up somewhere. So, you know, don't worry about it. Anyway, back to where I was. <laughs> see you later.